Greetings from Brother Stephen. I'm a disciple and witness of Ata Christ to all the inhabitants of the earth. I present to you as a witness this gospel of the kingdom. In the lesson today titled Pharisees and Sadducees Seek a Sign, we'll be going over Matthew chapter 16 verses 1 through 4. Before we get into those that subsection of scriptures so you can understand what a sign means, we're going to go back to the book of Genesis chapter 1 verses 14 through 16. This is on the fourth day when God created the sun, the moon, and the other planets. It says, And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament. This is in the atmosphere of the heavens, which we call the sky, to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs. This is the first time the word signs appear in scriptures. It means to convey meaning, information, direction, identification, and warnings. It says, and for seasons, and for days and years, and let them be for lights in the firmament. So one of the things I want to point out, one of the main purposes of the um, sun and the moon and the, uh, and the planets is first to be a sign and warnings, then for seasons and for days and years, and let them be for lights in the firmament, again, the atmosphere of the heaven, which we call the sky to give light upon the earth, and it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, which is the sun, and the lesser light to rule the night, which is what we call the moon. He made the stars also, and these stars are referring to the um, what we call planets, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. So now we're going to get into Matthew chapter 16, verses 1 through 4, this is when the Pharisees and Sadducees seek a sign. Verse 1 says, the Pharisees, also with the Sadducees, came, tempting, desiring him that he would show them a sign. Again, the sign in the sun, the moon, and the planets to convey meaning, information, directions, identification, or warning. So they would show them a sign from heaven. When you go to Mark chapter 8, verses 11 through 13, um, the subsection of scripture is Mark, known as the Pharisees seek a sign. It's saying the Pharisees came forth and began to question with him, seeking of him a sign from heaven, tempting him. Now, when you go back to Matthew chapter 12, um, we did a study titled The Sign of Jonas in verse 38. It says, Then certain of the scribes and the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would see a sign from you. And the sign is the same sign from the constellations, from the sun, the moon, and the planets. Now, when you go to Luke chapter 11, verses 29 through 32, it's testimony of the sign of Jonah. Verse 29 says, And when the people were gathered thick together, he began to say, This is an evil generation. They seek a sign, and there shall no sign be given it, but the sign of Jonas the prophet. And again, we go over the sign of Jonas the prophet in detail in the study titled The Sign of Jonah. Um, so now we're going to get into the book of Isaiah because this sign, the reason the Pharisees, Sadducees, and scribes were seeking a sign was because the book of Isaiah mentioned this sign over and over again so we're going to go over a few verses in the book of isaiah so you understand why the pharisees sadducees and scribes were seeking a sign um, before we get into the scriptures in isaiah just a brief history of the book of isaiah uh, the book of isaiah is supposed to be wrote by isaiah the prophet um, it's supposed to be about prophecy and judgment um, in judah and the book of Isaiah is supposed to be written about 701 B.C. through 681 B.C., which is about the 18th century, I believe. And um, it is basically to convince the people that salvation was possible through repentance and hope in the coming Messiah. Um, there are 66 chapters in the book that can be um, separated into three categories, which is condemnation, um, then you have comfort in exile, and then about the 56 to 66 book, it's about the future hope of Israel. Um, one of the main key verses throughout the entire book of Isaiah is Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. It says, For to us a child is born, 
To us, a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. So now we're going to go over a few verses in the book of Isaiah so we, can under, so we can understand why the scribes and Pharisees and Sadducees were seeking a sign in the New Testament. So we begin in Isaiah chapter 5, verses 25 through 26. It says, Therefore is the anger of yod kindled against his people, and he hath stretched forth his hand against them, and hath spitten them, and the hills did tremble. And their carcasses was torn in the midst of the streets. For all this, his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. And he will lift up an ensign. Now, this word ensign is translated from a Hebrew word, nas. That's N-A-S. It means a banner, flag, or warning to assemble for war. So, to go over a few scriptures to help you understand how did I come up with this definition for Nas, we're going to jump to the book of Jeremiah so we can, so I can show you how did I come up with this definition of um, this uh, word ensign from the Hebrew word Nas. And then we're going to get back to the prophecies of this sign that the um, Sadducees scribes and scri scribes and pharisees were seeking so if we go to jeremiah chapter 4 verses 5 through 18 this subsection of scripture is known as the disaster um, disaster from the north we're going to read just five and six to make our point they say declare you in judah and publish in jerusalem and say blow the trumpet in the land this means get ready for war Cry together, cry, gather together, and say, assemble yourselves. Again, I say it, warning to assemble for war. Assemble yourselves and let us go into the defense cities. Set up the standard. Now, unless you study Hebrew and Greek the way I do, I literally take every word that's in the King James Version Bible and translate it back to the original Hebrew or Greek word. You will not know that this word standard and this word ensign come from the same word. They both come from the Hebrew word nas. And here, verse 6, set up the warning towards Zion. It says, retire. This means leave and take refuge. Stay not. See, it's a warning. Stay not. For I will bring evil from the north and great destruction. So here we have Nas talking about a warning. If you go to Jeremiah chapter 4 verses 19 through 31, this is the lamentation of Judah. And we, again, we're just going to go over verses 19 through 21. It says, my bowels, my bowels, I am pain in my very heart. My heart make a noise in me. I cannot hold my peace because you have heard, O oh my soul, the sound of the trumpet the alarm of war. So one of the things that is important to understand in this lesson is that even trumpets are basic and um, um, are the alarm of war. Verse 20 says, destruction upon destruction is cried, for the whole land is spoiled. Suddenly, her my tents spoiled and my curtains in a moment. So. I'm going to come right back to explaining my definition of an ensign. But one of the things I want to do, explain the second part of verse 20, where it says, suddenly are my tents spoiled and my curtains in a moment. You know, in order to understand what he's saying there, you have to go to Psalms chapter one, verses five to seven. And this is about the bride. I'll go over this subsection of scripture in detail in a study titled Yahashua's family. Verse five says, I am black. And this is by King Solomon. King Solomon is saying, I am black, but calmly. Calmly means beautiful. I'm black, but beautiful. O ye daughters of Jerusalem. This is Israel. As the tents. Tents just mean curtains. I mean, tents mean skins. So when you see tents here, this is word tents. It's talking about their skins. Of Kadar. Kadar means black skin. It means nigger. Kadar and nigger means the same thing. 
So he's saying the Israelites here are niggers. Then it says as the curtains. So you have here tents of Kedar, curtains, my tents and my curtains. He says of Solomon. The reason it says of Solomon here, because right in the beginning, what did Solomon say about his skin? He said, I am black. So again, he's saying, I am black but beautiful. O ye daughters of Jerusalem, shades of nigger, as the shades of black. So when you go back to verse 20 here in Jeremiah chapter 4, it says, Suddenly are my niggers spoiled in a moment. Go back to verse 21. How long shall I see the standard? Again, this is come from that Hebrew word nas. I mean, how long shall I see the banner? And hear the sound of the trumpet. So from here, I'm going to go to Jeremiah chapter 51, verses 1 through 3. This is the judgment of Babylon. Um, we're going to read verses 1 through 3. It says the word that yod heh spake against Babylon and against the land of the Chaldeans by Jeremiah the prophet. It says, declare you among the nations and, pub and publish and set up the standard. To set up the ensign, set up the warning, publish, conceal not, say Babylon is taken, Baal is confounded, Murdoch is broken in pieces, her idols are confounded, her images are broken in pieces. For out of the north there come up a nation against her, which shall make her land desolate, and none shall dwell therein. They shall remove, they shall depart, both man and beast so again we see this word here it means and again it means warning when you go to jeremiah chapter 51 verses 1 through 14 this is about the severe judgment of babylon we're going to read verses 11 through 12 it says make bright the arrows gather the shields your Tevafe has raised up the spirit of the king of the medes for his device is against Babylon to destroy it because it is the vengeance of yod the vengeance of his temple. Set up the standard, set up the flags upon the walls of Babylon. Make the watch strong, set up the watchmen, prepare the ambush for yod have had both devised and done that which, it, which he spake against the inhabitants of Babylon. So once again, earlier, I gave you a definition for the Hebrew word nas, and I said it means a banner, flag, or warning to assemble for war. I went over some scriptures so you can understand where that definition came from biblically. But now there's one more definition I want to go over of nas. If you take the Hebrew word nas, which is the nun and shamic from the most modern Hebrew language, if you translate that back to the most ancient Hebrew, you have the symbol seed and the symbol for thorn. And what these two symbols, when you put them together, what it means, seed either means heirs or sons or the descendants. And this means protected. So basically, one of the definitions you can add, and we're going to later as we go through this verse, you'll understand why I'm giving you the ancient definition of the word also because although it means a banner and flag or warning to assemble for war but the heirs or the sons will be protected so now we're going to go back to matthew chapter 16 verses 1 through 4 this is the pharisees and sadducees seek a sign so the pharisees also with the sadducees came tempting desiring him that he will show them a sign from heaven they was looking for an end sign. They would wanted a sign to assemble and prepare for war. They was ready to uprise and rebel against Rome. So they was that's the that's the rust why they was looking for this end sign. And we're going to go over a few more scriptures in the book of Isaiah to confirm it. You go to again Isaiah chapter five verses twenty five through twenty six. He say and lift up. An end sign. This is this is the sign that the Pharisees, Sadducees, and scribes was looking for. He will lift up an end sign. They was looking for this prophecy to be fulfilled 
in Christ. Again, an, an ensign is assigned to a symbol. Assigned to a symbol. It is assigned in the sun, the moon, and the other planets. To the nations from afar. Uh, from afar, it means because, again, sun, moon, and stars. He will hiss. This word hiss means blow a trump. Unto them from the ends of the earth. And behold, they shall come speedily with swift. So the, again, the scribes, the Pharisees, they was looking for Jesus, for Christ, not Jesus, sorry about that, Jesus, to fulfill this prophecy to get ready for war and assemble the children of Israel. So they can um, basically rebel against the Roman authority. And, you know, and go to Isaiah chapter 11 verses 10 through 12. It says, and in that day, anytime you read in that day, majority of the time it's referring to in the last days. It says there shall be a root. These are descendants of Jesse, that seed, the nun. If you go to Matthew chapter 1 verse 6, it says, and Jesse begat King David. So these are descendants of King David. It said, which shall stand for an ensign of the people. To it shall the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious. And it shall come to pass in that day. We're talking about the last days. And again, these scriptures that talk about in that day, we go over them in detail in a study titled Purification of the Nations. So again, and it came to pass in that day. That the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people. This is what the scribes, Pharisees, and Sadducees was looking for. Which shall be left from Assyria, and from Egypt, and from Pathros, and from Cush, and from Elaine, and from Shinar, and from Hamath, and from the islands of the sea, which is, mean, which is Europe, the, land, the lands of the Gentiles, Yaphet's seed. Verse 12 says, and he shall set up an ensign, again, a warning, that war and destruction is coming for the nations. And he shall assemble the outcast of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judea from the four corners of the earth, which means the four hemispheres. Isaiah 8 and 3, all ye inhabitants of the world and dwellers on the earth, see you when he lift up an ensign, a sign in the sun, the moon, and the stars on the mountains. And when he blow a trump, hear you. If you go back to Jeremiah chapter 4, um, verses 5, and was the, this subsection, this come out of subsection of scriptures known as the disaster from the north. It say, declare you in Judah and publish in Jerusalem, say, blow you the trumpet in the land. Again, get ready for war. Cry, gather together and say, assemble yourselves and let us go into the defense cities. So as you can see, this end sign with the trumpets go hand in hand. But again, the ensign does not happen until the last days. That's why um, the scribes and Pharisees and Sadducees didn't get the ensign because those was not the last days like they thought they were. Again, let's go to Isaiah chapter 30 and 17. It says, 1,000 shall flee at the rebuke of one. And at the rebuke of five shall ye flee, till ye be left as a beacon upon the top of the mountain and as an end sign on the hill. So once again, this is why they were seeking this sign from heaven from Christ. They was ready to assemble for war and take back over Eden. Isaiah chapter 31 and 9. And he shall pass over to his stronghold for fear, and his princes shall be afraid of the ensign. 
saith the Lord Hebafe, whose fire is in Zion. So you just read about on top of the mountain, it's talking about Zion and his furnace in Jerusalem. <clears throat> Go to Isaiah chapter 4 and 4. It says, On the Lord shall have washed away the filth of his daughters of Zion, and shall have purged the blood of Jerusalem from the midst thereby by the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning. So again, Isaiah 4 and 4 is just to help you to confirm what it means when it says, um, Shall they be afraid of the ensign, saith yod whose fire is in Zion and his furnace is in Jerusalem. And in here it says he will purge the blood of Jerusalem from the midst thereof by the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of a burning, a burning fire, a burning furnace. In other words, he's going to purge it out through Christ's coming judgment. We go over this in detail that during Christ's coming judgment, all the Israelites that do not repent, they are going to die in Christ's coming judgment. And it is how this is how he's going to purge the blood of Jerusalem and Israel. Because every all every last Israelite that is unholy is going to burn. He's going to destroy them permanently. One more verse, Zechariah. Chapter 9, verses 16, it says, And yod heh their God, shall save them in that day as the flock of his people. And he shall be as the stones of a crown lifted up as an ensign upon his land. So again, we know those verses. So now when we get back to Matthew chapter 16, verses 1 through 4, you understand exactly why the Israelites was asking um, to see a sign from heaven. So we're going to go back to Matthew chapter 16, verse 1. The Pharisees also and the Sadducees came and tempting him, desired him that he would show them a sign from heaven that was looking for the end sign from the book of Isaiah. Now, one of the things I'm going to go over is the end sign that they was looking for does not happen until the book of Revelations 12th chapter. And we're going to go read the end sign that the Pharisees and Sadducees and scribes were seeking. Revelations chapter 12, verses 1 through 4, this subsection of scripture is known as the woman and the dragon. It said, and there appeared a great wonder. This, this word wonder means sign in heaven or sign from heaven. There appeared an ensign in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars. It says, a woman clothed with the sun. This is Virgo, clothed with the sun. And the moon under her feet and upon her head a crown of 12 stars this is the constellation leo but on september 23rd 2017 the moon the jupiter sun mercury mars and venus lined up in a straight line to make this prophecy come to pass this is the end sign that the book of Isaiah talks about, and this is the end sign that the, they were seeking in the New Testament. And it happened September 23rd, 2017. So again, and it had, Virgo had a crown of 12 stars. Leo had nine stars. On September 23rd, 2017, it was accompanied with three more stars, Venus, Mercury, and Mars, making it 12 stars. It says, and she being with child, cried the child is jupiter in the legs of the constellation virgo travailing in birth and pain to be delivered again this is the end sign that they were seeking this is the end sign isaiah was speaking about and this is the end sign the scribes pharisees and sadducees were seeking and it happened september 23rd 2017 so from here, 
uh, we're going to go to verse 3. It says, and there appeared another wonder. This means another sign in heaven. This is a, uh, let's go back up here. It's another sign in the sun and the moon and in the stars. Another sign in the constellations. It says, and behold, a great red dragon having seven heads. This great red dragon having seven heads is referring to the constellation serpents. And the constellation serpents have seven stars. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, um, I go over this in detail in the study titled Abomination of Desolation. If you go to Revelations chapter 17, verse 9, it says, And here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sit. And again, I'll go over this in detail. In the abominations of desolation, this is not talking about the Roman Catholic Church sitting on seven hills. This is talking about the seven mountains of influence to control the world and every population, control people. You have to control arts and entertainment. That's music, that's the music industry, the basketball industry, football industry. All your talent, can't make it big without going through them. Business, they did that with just making the Federal Reserve Bank a private bank. Education, the, the education we receive today in the United States of America is really a false religion covered up with other education. They're teaching us their religion. We evolved from monkeys, Big Bang Theory. Those things is heresy, not biblical. There, there's con, there, it is contrary to the word of God. They control family. They control, they have birth control. They run the government, they own the media, and they make sure they control religion. So again, the seven heads, which represents the constellation serpent, it also represents the seven mountains of influence. Um, again, verse three, and there appeared another one. This is a sign in heaven in the constellations. It said, and behold, a great red dragon having seven heads. Again, the constellation serpents and referring to the seven mountains of influence. And then it says, and ten horns. When you go to Revelations chapter 17, verses 12, it says, and the ten horns, which you saw, are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but received power as kings one hour with the beast. I'll go over this in detail in the study title, explaining eating the kingdom of God and for proof. I sold you a bullion coin that talks about the New World regions, and it shows um, basically the ten kings and the ten regions that they, they plan on dividing um, the constellations up into. So we're back to verse three. There appeared another sign in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon having seven heads which is the constellation serpents, which is also represented by the seven mountains of influence, and ten horns represent ten kings, and seven crowns upon his head. So, when you look at the constellation serpents, it's just the head of the serpent, above his head is Corona Boilus, and it's seven stars that make up Corona Boilus. So, in other words, you know that this thing is talking about constellations. There's no way all this will add up and make this much sense. The scripture said, let that which be done in heaven be done on earth. In the beginning, it said, let them be for signs. So, now when we go to verse 4, it says, and his tail drew a third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. Now, most people, when they read that verse, they try to make, they try to look for a star line, um, a star alignment in the constellations, like kind of what happened on September 23rd, 2017, but they cannot find a star alignment. The reason they cannot find a star alignment because they're not reading the verse correctly. It says his trail, his tail drew a third part of the stars of heaven 
and cast into the earth. That is the constellation serpent being cast out of the heavens and with it a third of the stars to come destroy the earth. It is the um, it is Christ's coming judgment. Basically, the seven trumpets that are in the book of Revelations are the seven stars that's, um, of the constellation serpents falling out of the heavens to the earth. I'll go over this in detail in Christ's coming judgment. I'll go over this in a short study, short study titled The Third Part because it says, and his tail drew a third part. It drew, it, it drew a third part, and then as you continue reading the book of Revelations, it, it destroys a third part. It destroys the Americas, North America, South America, Australia, which is a third of all the land mass on the earth, destroyed. I'll go over this in Woe to the Unrepentant and also in the study title, um, God's Chosen Servant. So if you want, I have a bunch of studies out there that you can go over and review in regards to um the seven trumpets in the book of Revelations, what they are, what they are referring to, and what they are destroying as they hit the earth. So we're going to Revelations 12, 1 and 4, again, known as the woman and the dragon. Um, and verse 1 says, and there appeared a great wonder. Remember, this is a sign in the heavens, in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars. A woman clothed with the sun. The moon under her feet and upon her head 12 stars a crown of 12 stars and she being with child cried travailing in birth pain to be delivered this is an ensign and remember we defined ensigns earlier when we went through those scriptures in jeremiah this is the warning and it happened september 23rd 2017. now when you go to verse 3 what follows the warnings destruction war so now you go to verse 3, and there appeared another sign in heaven. And behold, the great red dragon. Again, these are the seven trumpets of war. So after the warning, then it's war time. And there was only 70 weeks between Revelations 12, verses 1, um, 1 and 2, verse, between verses 2 and 3. Only 70 weeks. So that means... Um, Revelations um, 12 and 3 supposed to happen January 26th, I believe, 2019. So now we go to Isaiah chapter 5, verses 26 30 again, and it says, And I will lift up an ensign. He's going to lift up a warning to the nations from afar. Again, a sign from heaven. So the, again, I'm going to read that one more time. It's saying, I will lift up an ensign. This is the warning to the nations from afar because it is a sign from the heavens and the sun and the moon and the stars. And I will hiss. I will blow a trumpet unto them from the end of the earth. And behold, they shall come speedily with swift. That is the assembly. Assemble. And earlier, again, we, we was talking about an, what an ensign means in the book of Jeremiah. We have warning, trumpets of war, and assembling. So here, Revelations 12, 1 through 2 is the end sign. Verse 3, the trumpets of war. When you go back to Isaiah, during one of these trumpets is they're going to begin to assemble. Now when you get to Jeremiah chapter 9 verses 16, it says, And yod heh vav -Hey, their God shall save them. This goes back to the heirs or sons protected during Christ's coming judgment. That's that word nas in the ancient Hebrew. And yod heh vav -Hey, their God shall save them in that day as the flock of his people. For they shall be as stones. This word stones is talking about um, 12 stars of a crown. This is talking about the crown that is upon Virgo's head. Lifted up as an ensign. So in other words, they shall be like a lion.
Again, if you go to Revelations 12, 1 through 4, say, and a woman, it talks about the woman and the dragon, it says, and there appeared a sign in heaven, and the sun, the moon, and the stars, Virgo, which clothed the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head, a crown of 12 stars. That's her head, and that's the crown above her, the uh, crown of stars above her head. So when it's saying they shall be as the stones of a crown, it is referring to the constellation Leo. They shall be like a lion. When you go to Isaiah chapter 5, verses 39 through 30, verses 29 through 30, it says, Their warring shall be like a lion. They shall war like young lions. Yes, they shall war and lay hold of their prey and shall carry it away safely, and none shall deliver it. Again, we go over this in purification of the nations. And in that day, talking about the last days, they shall war against them like the warring of the sea. And if one look unto the land, come out the Americas, behold darkness and sorrow, and the light is darkened in the heavens thereof. So now we're going back to Revelations, chapter 12, verses 1 through 4, the woman and the dragon. It says, and we have verse 4 now, it says, And his tail drew a third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child. Again, this refers to what we call Jupiter, as soon as it was born. So, when it says the dragon stood before the woman, there's the dragon, which referring to the constellation serpents, stood before the woman with the seven crowns with his crown above his head um, the scripture says ready um, stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour the child as soon as it was born this is the sign in heaven this sign also happened on earth it happened when Moses was born and Pharaoh ordered all the male children to be killed it also happened when Christ was born when Herod ordered um, all the male children to be killed from um, two years and younger. So again, the scripture said that which is done um, in heaven shall be done on earth. So now we're going to come back to Matthew chapter 16, verses 1 through 4. Um, the Pharisees and Sadducees seek a sign. Um, again, the Pharisees also with the Sadducees came in tempting, desiring him that he will show them a sign from heaven. Now you know everything about the sign from heaven. He answered and said unto them, this is um, Jesus talking now, or Ata. Jesus is the Greek, Ata is Hebrew. He answered and said unto them, when it is evening, you say, it will be fair, fair rather, for the sky is red. And when they say red here, it's red and not cloudy. So when I have a picture here, because you can look, of course, if there's no clouds, that no rain is coming. Verse 3. In the morning, it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. This means and cloudy. So this is how you know up here when it says just red, it don't mention any clouds. So not cloudy. Here it's red and it mentioned clouds. And you say it's going to be foul weather, you know it's going to rain because you see the clouds. You say, oh, you hypocrites, you can forecast the face of the sky but he can not the signs of the times in other words if you go back i have another study titled yahashua fulfills the law yahashua came and he was fulfilling all of these prophecies from the old testament and they wanted to ignore all the prophecies he was fulfilling just because he didn't fulfill the prophecy of the ensign. Just because he didn't bring war. So they can rebel against Rome. So you say, you hypocrites, you can forecast the face of the sky, but you cannot the signs of the time. You ignored all the prophecies that he fulfilled. And again, the study is titled, Yahashua Fulfills the Law. It talks about the thing he fulfilled when he came here from the Old Testament. Luke 
chapter 12, verses 54 to 56. This subsection of scripture is known as interpreting the present time. It says, and he said also to the people, when you see a cloud rise out of the west, straight where you say, there come a shower or rain. And so it is. And when you see the south wind blow, you say, there will be heat. And it come to pass. You hypocrites, you can forecast the face of the sky and of the earth. But how is it that ye do not forecast this time? In other words, referring to Christ fulfilling the law. But now we're going to go to Matthew chapter 24, verses 32 through 35. This is the lesson of the fig tree. They say, now learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branches is yet tender and put forth leaves you know that summer is near so likewise when ye when you shall see all these things know that it is near even at the door so when you first thing we're going to do is what he's talking about when you see all these things we're going to go back up to matthew chapter 24 starting at the first verse so we know what he's talking about. We say, when ye shall see all these things, we're going to go over these things. So we know if it is near, even at the doors. So let's go to Matthew chapter 24, verses 1 through 4. This, it talks about the temple destruction foretold. Verse 1 says, And Jesus went up and departed from the temple. His disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See you not all these things? Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be torn down. Talking about the temple destruction foretold. We go over the temple being destroyed, how this prophecy was fulfilled in sealing up the vision and the prophecy. So you have to go back over that study um, if you want more information about the temple destruction. Uh, showing that that prophecy has come, it cast, came to pass. Verse 3 says, And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of your coming and the end of the world? So again, what is the signs of your coming and the end of the world? Likewise, when you shall see all these things, Know that it is near, even at the door. The first thing he give is the temple destruction. That happened already. When you go to, uh, as a matter of fact, it happened in like 70 AD. Now when you go to Matthew chapter 24, verses 5 through 8, this subsection of scriptures is known as false Christ. It says, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am, saying, I am Christ. Christ in Greek means um, anointed. So many shall come in my name saying I'm anointed. Anointed to do what? Go to Luke chapter 4 verses 18. And the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he have anointed me to preach the gospel. So for, so for many shall come in my name saying I'm anointed to preach the gospel. And it say and shall deceive many. That prophecy is fulfilled. Majority of the world call themselves Christians from the Roman Catholic Church to all these different denominations, deceiving men. And everybody saying they are anointed and everybody saying they're Christians. Prophecy fulfilled. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Prophecy fulfilled. All you have to do is turn on the news. So that ye be not troubled for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, World War I, and kingdom against kingdom, World War II. I'll go over this um, in detail in a study titled, God's Covenant with Abraham. It says, and there shall be famines. This means starvation. And all you have to do is go on Google, Google starvation and look at the images. Look at how people are starving today in this world. 
It's a pestilence. This is a disease. I don't have these things about starvation and disease. You don't even have to prove them. We know it is happening. And it says, and earthquakes in diverse places. Some people want to say, oh, we always have earthquakes, but I have here just a record of earthquakes. If you go back to December, year 1037, to November 22, year 1800, that is 763 years, they had a total of 64 earthquakes. Then from October 26, 1802, to October um, 9th, 1900, so you got about 100 years. You had, they had a total of 47 recorded earthquakes. So in 100 years, they had just as many earthquakes as they did in 763 years. When you go to 1901 to 2000, that's 100 years. They had 307 recorded earthquakes. That's more earthquakes in 100 years than they had in the last 863. And now when you go from 2001 to 2017, that's only 16 years and a recorded 579 earthquakes. That's more earthquakes in 16 years than the last 963 years. So this prophecy has came to pass also. Verse 8 says, all these are the beginning." Of sorrow so we ain't seen nothing yet so now we have Matthew chapter 24 verses 19 through 14 and this subsection of scripture is known as a witness to all nations verse 9 says then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake and then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another this is the last three and a half years of the tribulation period it's saying many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. So this is referring to the great tribulation period in the book of Revelations. But now you go to verse 14. It says, and this gospel of the kingdom. And again, when it says this gospel of the kingdom, it is referring to the book of Matthew. You said you want to go. Why are you saying it's referring to the book of Matthew? If you do a word search. And as you can see here, I did a word search for the King James Version Bible gospel of the kingdom. This phrase appears only appears three times in the book of Matthew and once in the book of Mark. But Matthew, Mark, Luke and John are all the gospels. So it's referring to when you hear this gospel of the book of Matthew. Verse 14 says, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached. If you go to Mark chapter 13, verses 10 through 30, um, this subsection of scripture is known as a witness unto all nations. If you go to verse 10, it says, and the gospel must first be published. This means openly pro proclaimed among all nations. That means um, where everybody will have access to the same gospel. So the entire everybody on the entire face of the earth is going to have access to the same gospel. Now, one of the things I want to point out here, if you go look up the word publish in the English language today, one of the definitions of the word publish is to make the content available online. This is the only way possible that in these last days, every last single person on earth will have access to the same gospel. Now, one of the things that I want to point out is this thing. Is this scripture coming to pass? Well, if you go again. To this YouTube channel is titled the gospel of the kingdom and as you can see in this gospel of the kingdom this YouTube channel it is going through the book of Matthew the gospel of the kingdom and it goes in order it goes through the book of Matthew and right now again this lesson 
we are in Matthew um, chapter 16. So this prophecy of the gospel being openly proclaimed to all nations. This content is made available online to everybody. This prophecy is being fulfilled also. Verse 14, and when the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. So I honestly believe in my heart by the time I get done going through this book of Matthew, that shortly after the end will come, which of which I believe is the beginning of the seven trumpets. And I believe that's going to start January 26, 2019. I started doing my recordings September 19th or 20th, just two days after September 23rd, 2017. So I do not think that is a coincidence. I'm about halfway through the Gospels, and this is May, um, close to the end of June. So I believe by January of next year, I will be done going through the book of Matthew, and it lines up perfect with Scripture so far. So now we're going to go back to Mark chapter 8, um, I mean Matthew chapter 24, verses 32 through 35. This is a lesson of the fig tree. Verse 33 says this, So likewise you, when ye shall see all these things, and again, all what things? The temple destruction foretold, false, false Christ. World War I, World War II, starvation, disease, earthquakes in diverse places, and the witness unto all nations. Know that it is near, even at the door. I'm trying to tell everybody, it is near, even at the doors. So now we have Mark chapter 8, verses 11 through 13. This is the Pharisees seek a sign. This is Mark testimony at verse 12. It says, and he sighed deeply in his spirit and said, why do this generation seek after a sign? Verily I say unto you, there shall no sign be given unto this generation. And he, and he left them and entering into a ship again, departed to the other side. Matthew chapter 16, verses one through four, the Pharisees and Sadducees seek a sign. Verse four says, a wicked and adulterous generation seek after a sign. And there shall no sign be given unto it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. And he left them and departed. And again, we go over the sign of Jonas in detail in the study titled The Sign of Jonah from Matthew chapter 12, verses 38 to 42. And this concludes this message.